For some kids of the 80s, life consisted of television, computers, and comic books. Unfortunately, comic books were made of paper, which could be expensive and is cumbersome to copy, meaning that building a personal collection was impossible for most. But what if comic books could be copied, just like software? Imagine if the e-reader would have existed in the 1980s. Imagine a comic book reader for the Commodore 64. Could that even be possible? And how would this have worked? What would it even look like? This video is about Stripstream, a new kind of protocol that has the potential of making comic book readers for the Commodore 64 a reality. Software in the 80s existed in two forms. Originals and copies. Many users primarily owned copies, which they made themselves from a copy of a friend who copied it from a friend. This resulted in kids having huge personal software libraries that were mostly illegal. And if you needed an empty disc and had a game you didn't like, simply copy another game over it and reuse the disc. However regarding books and comics, there wasn't much copying going on. Mostly because color copies were out of reach and black and white copies still cost 10 cents a page. So if you had a friend with a comic book you wouldn't copy it. Because of the limited budget, kids needed their copies to be free. And let's be honest, what do you prefer, a new full color version or a crappy single-sided black and white expensive copy? Lending a book from a friend or the local library was always an option. But without the ability of making a copy, you would never own it yourself. If in the 80s a comic book existed, in some digital form, things might have worked out differently for many kids. Just imagine a comic book format for your Commodore 64. Imagine reading the latest comic on a CRT. Imagine reading an elaborate background story in comic book form before playing a game. It literally could have been a game changer. But, it never happened. However, why not create such a system? Why not make this happen? If we want to store a comic book onto a commonly available 80s medium, a medium intended to be used with a Commodore 64, then, what would that medium be? There are really only two choices. One is audio cassette tapes, which can be read by the 1530 dataset. The other is floppy disks, which can be read by the 1541 disk drive. A logical thought would be floppy disks. Although disk drives were better in many ways, they were also more expensive. And when it comes down to cost, audio tapes can be a real competitor. But only used in combination with the correct tape protocol. The very common 60-minute audio tape could hold about 1.8 megabytes. That's up to 10 single-sided Commodore 64 discs. Or just 5 discs if you used a disc doubler and was prepared to flip the disc around. Many people with a Commodore 64 and 1541 disc drive did that, totally disregarding the warnings of so-called experts. The fact remains that it worked pretty darn well. Reducing the operational costs of floppy disks by 50%. And regarding reliability on the long run, many 40-year-old double disks can still be read without any problems. Although disk can store less data, they occupy more physical storage space. The size of 10 tapes is exactly the same as two disk boxes of 10 disks each. But the tapes can store a total of 18 megabytes, where the disks can only store 3. But when it comes to speed, the floppy disks are much faster. With the press of a button you can instantly load a file anywhere from the disk. But with tape you always need to wind to the correct position, which takes time. But when reading a comic book, do you really need random access? The images of a comic book are only useful when viewed in the correct order. So a random access medium is not relevant here. And technically, tape has the big advantage of remembering where it has been stopped. 
So if you switch off your computer, you can resume from exactly the same location on the tape as where you have stopped it. But when using a disk, this would require additional code, effort and storage space in order to achieve the same result. These are almost all the reasons why Stripstream uses audio tape as its medium. Nostalgia is the final reason. It's the soft humming of the motor, the gentle spinning of the reels, and the hard plastic box capable of holding some nice artwork. Simple things that create that full retro experience, an experience that no other digital media can provide. It might be hard to imagine that this book and all of its images, all 300 of them, fit onto an ordinary tape. 30 minutes of tape can hold more than 300 images and 1200 lines of text. And the only thing required to play it back is an ordinary Commodore 64 and a dataset. Simply insert the tape into the dataset and type load. Then the waiting begins, it takes about 40 seconds to load in the player program, which might seem pretty long according to modern standards. In the 80s it was considered to be pretty fast. Some might say that computer users of the 80s had a lot more patience. But in reality, there simply was no other option but to wait. And on very bad days, there might be loading errors, and it took several tries to load a single file. However, this mostly was because of bad maintenance of the dataset, or the use of crappy tapes and cheap copies. When the player program has been loaded, it will automatically start loading the image data from the tape. The images on the screen smoothly scroll from right to left as the new data is loaded. When an image is completely loaded, the tape automatically stops. In order to load the next image, simply press space and the tape will start again, loading new data. Unfortunately, the Commodore 64 has its limitations. Although the screen resolution is 320 by 200 pixels, the practical graphical area in this application is only 304 by 96. This is mostly because of double buffering required for smooth scrolling and the space required for displaying the user interface. Pushing the spacebar for every loaded image might get boring pretty quickly, so instead the user can press shift lock. This way the tape can be played from start to finish without user intervention. Because of the low resolution, text balloons are not really an option. Therefore subtitles are used and displayed underneath the image. Unfortunately, the text of the book used for this example had to be reduced greatly in order to fit the tape. But since the images are telling most of the story, this is an acceptable sacrifice. In order to reach a wider audience, subtitles support the use of two different languages. By pressing F5, the user can select which language to use. And by pressing F7, metadata of the book can be shown. Some might ask, why even include metadata on such a limited system? The answer is simple. Why not? All data on the tape is stored in the form of tiny packages. Each package has its own function. There are packages for image data, subtitles, metadata, user intervention requests and status indicators. This means that the tape can be stopped and started at any time and started anywhere. Upon resuming, a new package will quickly be found and the progress bar will always display the correct information. With the Stripstream Editor, which is the software written especially for this project, anyone can make its own Stripstream release. Because the Stripstream Editor is completely free, and anyone with a modern Windows PC should be able to use it, since its interface is pretty straightforward. Because the whole project revolves around tapes, the program allows the selection of various tape sizes. This way the program can split the data at the correct moment, so you would not have to swap the tape in the middle of loading an image. The editor allows to add as many frames as you'd like. Each frame can hold one image and a set of subtitles. Adding a frame in between or deleting one is also possible should this be required. 
For each image, the contrast, brightness and dithering levels can be adjusted to make sure that the image looks at its best when displayed on the C64. And the dual language subtitles can be entered as four individual 40-column lines, supporting both upper and lower case characters. It is also possible to specify how the image should be aligned on the screen, which is sometimes useful to isolate an image to make it look more important. But also if the user should be required to press space to continue after the loading of the current image, or to load the next image automatically without user intervention. But perhaps the most important function in this program is the function to export all data in the TAP file format, which is the standard emulator file format for Commodore-related tapes. If all settings are properly configured, the export function generates a single TAP file that holds both the player and all the data. All the images, metadata, text and progress status indicators are saved into tiny packages in the TAP file. And when the export function is complete, the generated TAP file can be dropped directly into the VICE emulator to test or use it. No further processing required. One final step would be transferring the TAP file to a real tape. And there are plenty of options that are appropriate, the best would be the 1541 Ultimate with tape adapter. The cheapest option would be connecting a cassette deck to the audio output of the sound card of your PC. But that's all outside the scope of this video. The Stripstream project proves that it would have been possible in the 1980s to read and distribute comic books on cheap audio cassette tapes. Everybody will agree that this project is 40 years too late and that today this has no practical value. But, I like my projects to be silly. And regarding silly, wouldn't it be fun if the digital comic book could also be printed? Well, it may not come as a surprise to you that this is possible too. It is a hidden feature in the Stripstream player. If you connect an MPS803 compatible printer to your C64 and switch it on before the Stripstream player starts, the printing functionality is unlocked. A 30-minute tape can provide up to 10 hours of old-school printing fun. And with that we've come full circle. From paper to digital. And from digital to paper. Welcome to the future of 1980s technology. Welcome to Stripstream.